We're just getting off the uh, tram corner of Clarendon and Park Street, very desirable part of town. Catch up with my uh, friend Dave. I'm in the city a little early for my uh, medical appointment, so I might as well pop down here beforehand and uh, see what that is. Weather's improved substantially. Uh, when I was in Forest Hill this morning, it was overcast and quite nippy, and now the sun's out, so made a bit of a difference. It's probably, I don't know, 16 degrees, something like that now. It was 30 yesterday, but typical changeable weather that we get in Melbourne. But um, this is quite an upmarket part of town, South Melbourne. And Dave's been here for many years, owns his own place, and is very comfortable living in this area, which is understandable because it's very convenient. He's got lots of public transport, a tram line down here, tram line back there, there's other tram lines over there, light rail, there's a heap of, heap of uh, transport options. And uh, he's a uh, yeah, part of the old local community here, so he's very, very nicely settled. Decent sort of op shops nearby too. Uh, I've been in there. I think it's got some decent stuff. But it's a mixture of uh, of that type of thing plus quite a bit of affluence. So. But uh, yeah, it's it's all right to have a, a wander down, and it is uh, very very pleasant over that side of the road. It, you've got Albert Park down the road there, and that's uh, extremely upmarket. So you can see like city streetscape back there, and we're just heading towards Dave's little street, which is Cobden, which is nothing special. It's just one of those little laneway type streets, but he's in a nice area, so pretty convenient even though I wouldn't say that his his street itself is the most picturesque but uh, yeah. still worth an absolute squee in where he lives. So there's Cobden Street there and uh, Clarendon that's where he lives and right down the other end of this street so you know it's tree lined but it's a little small it's only a, like a more glorified laneway really uh, so I've walked down here a few times but uh, look he's been here for I think for over 20 years or so so he's, he's got I think he's got his mortgage out of the way and uh, got himself a nice little asset there not that he'd ever speculate and sell it I don't think I think he'd be there till he dies uh, but it's just a uh, to move into this area now would be very difficult, very expensive as Melbourne house prices are just insane uh, hopefully I'll stay a little insane up until about February when I sell my flat but uh, yeah compared to uh, Cairns it's not cheap getting a place to live around here uh, yeah lots of renovations everywhere uh, there's Cobden Street for you. I just went uh, to Dave's and uh, had uh, three beautiful uh, dark uh, ales, homebrew, very nice. 
and um, just missed out on uh, catching up with Pam. I think I might. Pam is his, his neighbour across the road. I think I must have offended her at a, at a uh, dinner party she had a few years back, and I haven't seen her since. So I'm paranoid now that that I'm persona non grata with her. So I uh, could be totally wrong, but the day is actually turning out okay. As you can see, it's nice and sunny. Bloody flies are out in force. It's not like it's that hot. It's probably about 18 degrees now. Quite pleasant. Still wear my windshield. I'm still in cans mode when it comes to the weather. It still feels coolish to me, but the sun's nice. And uh, so hopefully I'll catch up with um, Jeff as well as Dave tomorrow. He's tried to ring Jeff and of course can get through, but that's typical. Uh, but hopefully we can catch up tomorrow afternoon when I'm back in the city and uh, that's quite a few solar panels there of course you need more down here in Melbourne compared to up there in Cairns where they, they do tend to proliferate which makes more sense but uh, I just head over the other side of Clarendon Street here to the tram stop I want to get to get down to Vic Market, get some greens. So I'll just negotiate across here. No problem. There's the CBD up there. You can see the uh, towers and the. Uh, yeah, it's quite a nice streetscape here. And the side streets uh, aren't exactly steady either. Oh, it's a good place, good part of town. But I'm heading off towards the, uh, the tram stop just up here. And then we'll be uh, getting back to Elizabeth Street in the city and then uh, Vic Market. I think I've found the cheapest broccoli I've ever seen, 99 cents a kilo at Vic Market. It's pretty damn cheap. Uh, I defy you to get less than 99 cents a kilo for broccoli, but anyway. Uh, snow peas are about 8 bucks a kilo, which isn't bad either. I was going to get some green capsicum, but they, uh, the place is a bit crowded, so I backed off. But uh, I think they're about $2.99 a kilo. It was, it was okay, actually. It's a bit what they charge in coals in cans at the moment, but they do go on special. Some stages they're about six, seven bucks a kilo, so yeah, it's quite a reasonable discount to that. I'll come back here Thursday, I think, and get my meat as well for Christmas. And, uh, yeah, it's quite a pleasant day. As usual, there's lots of building happening here. Well, there's a few uh, housing blocks that have been completed as well on the other side of Big Market. But we're heading now north up towards uh, the university in Flemington Street. Sorry, Elizabeth Street, I should say. Um, well, cash converters where I got my push bike in cans. I'm trying to remember that name, cash converters. I don't know how I forgot it, but uh, did me no good in the long run because I didn't end up having that that uh, license registration number that you require for them to get off their backsides and actually look uh, for stolen goods. Without that, you might as well just forget it. They don't want to know you, which I think is pathetic, but uh, such is the modern crime uh, prevention services as they are. Now, cops don't do as much as they used to, by the things. I've taken the human factor out of it, like many things in this world. Uh, hopefully, there won't be too many hitches at. Uh, my medical appointment 
last time. They didn't have the results of my tests because they had new equipment. Fabulous. So even though the new equipment did the actual test much quicker, uh, presumably they didn't know how to interpret that data in a timely manner, so my uh, the doctor who seen me was lying blind, which is terrific. But uh, hopefully that won't be the case now. They've had a couple of months with their new toy, and now hopefully they know how to calibrate the bloody thing and make it work the way it should. But you never know. Anything can happen.